I see you all the time in public and you'll say to me, someone gifted me an orchid. I can't do this. I can't keep this alive. It'll just die. And then I'll see you and you'll say, oh, it never did bloom for two years and I just tossed it. Well, we're going to take the mystique out of the orchid in our home. You don't have to have a greenhouse. And Tim Schoonhover in Clarksville, who is quite extraordinary with his knowledge on orchids. Tim, start us out and let's, let's give confidence to the home orchid grower. Sure. First and foremost, uh, orchids are not uh, difficult plants uh, to grow. They're, you know, I often find myself saying, to, uh, said to you the other day, I can't grow roses. That's completely untrue. You know, my limitation is I don't understand the exact requirements and haven't really schooled myself in that, or I probably could grow, you know, wonderful uh, roses. But orchids are the same way. It's a matter of understanding some fundamentals on the conditions you need to grow them in, how and when to repot them, uh, what to do after they bloom, and basic understanding of those, and they will bloom faithfully every single year. And you know, I don't see anything wrong with the foliage on an orchid and how that looks in our in our homes, you know, in a in a special place. So it actually doesn't have to have a bloom on it all the time, does it? Right, and you know, we don't necessarily let our, you know, uh, perennials in our yards die off when they Excellent. go out of bloom. We know that we're going to have to take care of them, wait for that next year for them to look beautiful again. Okay, we've been given an orchid, and so how many, how long should we go? before we think about that repotting? Yeah, I would say at least every other year. It really depends on, you know, the conditions you're keeping the orchid in. If you're in conditions where you're having to water it more frequently, the potting medium is gonna break down much more quickly. And, you know, you are gonna to need to repot it maybe once a year. But I would say every other year is a good rule of thumb. Um, I would recommend getting with your local orchid growers because a lot of them will repot your orchids for you for a nominal fee. They'll have the right stuff to do it. You know, you're not having to rely on whether you bought the right mix at uh, the big box store uh, or whether you uh, potted them right when you did it. So, or at least go through that first potting with a local expert to where you feel confident I can do this from this point on. Okay, so one of the things about growing that orchid before we get into the repot potting what kind of a fertilizer or do you even have to fertilize yes that's a very important question and I hear people say hey I do fine with miracle Grow, or I do fine with uh, Peters this or that but the one thing that I have found out over the years is that you either want to use an organic fertilizer or a no urea formula whereas like the fertilizer they put on your lawn is very high very high nitrogen uh, based urea and is going to be much more inclined to burn the roots and as we repot this i'll be kind of showing you what could possibly be fertilizer damage to those roots so you want to use a, a good fertilizer fertilize them no more than half strength of whatever the uh, instructions say and weekly I always say the axiom is fertilize them weekly weekly oh you know what then I failed that first one but I actually purchased uh, it's put out by one of the major brands of fertilizers for house plants it's foliar feeding and you just spray it on and I, that is the only fertilization I've actually used on my Phylopsis that I have and may not been the right thing, but anyway, I don't know if that's Actually, that's a valid way to fertilize as long as again, you're not using a full strain These are epiphytes meaning they would be found growing on the sides of trees They don't they wouldn't have that many embedded roots in the tree or medium that they're growing in So they're counting on you know the rain the moisture where they can get water get that moisture and then quickly dry out once we start putting these into pots, we end up with a whole different set of things that we need to keep in mind, the m biggest of which is not keeping them too wet or over fertilized because their roots are very prone to burning. I have a question about humidity in this part. Um, would it be permissible to t say these uh, trays that we water our plants and the water goes into to put like people love rocks right to put those nice smooth petals and then 
put water underneath them, but they wouldn't be standing. Would that in, would that help them in the in home environment growing? Most definitely, um, a tray with pebbles. Uh, I would say a tray at least uh, the diameter of the leaves of the thing that's going to get that constant evaporation again as long as the plant is not sitting in that water if it's on those pebbles anything you can do to increase the the moisture uh, if you've got a window make sure that's away from a heating or cooling van because those you know are things that are going to dry out the leaves and, and roots quickly and you know i think it's sort of like growing uh, raising our children it's what we get them acclimated to perhaps i have 18 orchids I bring them in in, in the winter time and I put them in the northeast corner but they're all together so they collect the moisture from from their next door neighbor don't they doesn't that create an environment of humidity sure yeah you've created almost your own little jungle there so. okay mm -hmm. well let's let's talk about now we've been successful we're, we're ready to repot one tell us Super. about that all right well here's an orchid that has bloomed uh, way way overdue in repotting whenever you get these uh, roots growing over the lip of the pot that is that plants way of telling you I need water I need moisture I need food and I may not be getting it in the pot and I think we're going to discover here in a second when I pull this out of the pot why this plant is telling us by its little bit wilted lower leaves and its roots out here that are very healthy by the way I'm just not getting enough moisture and nutrients okay okay and you know it's interesting that that um this is actually not the root that's a covering on that the root is inside that what did you call that yes this covering is a moisture absorbing uh, a thing called velamen so again these are tropical plants grow in the jungle they're not down in the soil so they have that one time opportunity when it rains to absorb the moisture because within an hour or two sun's going to come out in the rainforest they're going to dry completely out so if they just had roots without that coating they would not have that almost a sponge like thing to say yeah. okay i'm going to soak up preserve this water so we could just strip away that outer cover and you would see the little root. Little, yep. It's like a hairline almost in root, fact, isn't it? When we uh, pull this plant out of the pot, we'll do, do that uh, with some of the dead roots. And you'll see um, that inner part of the root that you talked about. So you can see this guy is way overdue in being repotted. Um, you that's, think he was still happy? That's the little bit of bad news. Um, the really good news is that most of the roots that were down in that pot are very, very healthy. You have a few dead roots here uh, that we're going to trim off. Um, but overall, this guy's been pretty darn happy, which means uh, it has not been uh, overwatered. So first thing we're going to do is take and trim off some of these older leaves even if they've got a little bit of healthy root at the bottom if they're looking kind of dead and not so healthy at the top you talked about the center which is actually the root you can see that stringing material yeah. that's your actual root that's the dead covering there so you know we're going to want to get rid of most of this that we can get rid of and this one's actually going to be a pretty easy challenge to repot um, this thing here was probably the original peat thing that, say, the, that you know, we started started as a little tiny uh, plant but I think you're looking pretty good there overall what would they have put in there to make the plant would it have been a cutting a seed or what just a little tiny plantlet yeah just a little tiny plantlet and we're also going to go ahead uh, and cut off the old bloom spike we're going to talk about that too because that's another reason that a lot of folks orchids don't do well we're already stressing them out trying to grow them indoors and then we let them rebloom, and that double stresses them so when they complete that first bloom and start wanting to grow one again that's when we're going to want to cut that spike all the way yeah. back and we'll talk about that yeah. okay something i do this a little bit different but it is a tried and true uh, method for me just trying to decide here because i don't the one thing you don't want to do because you look at a plant like this and you had it planted in this and we're really tempted to say well that, look at that it needs a lot bigger pot too big that's a disaster waiting to happen far bigger than so that so i'm one. probably going to want to just go one size up here 
But the thing that I do that's a little bit different than most people do is I'm going to take, I try to repurpose a lot of things, including these packing styrofoam peanuts. The purpose of this is once I get that medium in there is to provide better drainage and also there will always, always, always be an air space where air can circulate at the bottom because that's the thing that will kill your roots most often as that uh, potting medium rots and gets compacted, the roots can't breathe and they are going to die. That's why you don't just use just potting soil. Right, that's why you don't just use, you can, in fact a lot of growers switch to that that's all fine and good if you're potting soil like the sphagnum moss we'll talk about if it's drying out fast enough but with most of us with typical growing conditions you want something where it'll dry out gradually not stay soggy in the meantime so what okay? doesn't hold the water something that doesn't hold water so you're going to want, want me to hold that sure you're going to want a medium such as this uh, you want a real loose medium all right the key elements of this medium would be the most important part. This is a fairly new thing in the last 10-15 years. Instead of using the traditional fir bark, what they're using now are shredded uh, coconut bark, right? Oh. So it's readily available. They have you know thousands of coconuts all over the beaches in the in the South Seas. Uh, they do have to, if you get a bale of these, you do have to soak them to make sure you get all the salt water out because most of them are from beach oh, yeah. areas. The beauty of these, if you look, when I squeeze it, it's almost like a little sponge, okay? So when that absorbs the moisture, even if I pull it out and it looks somewhat dry, it's gonna have just enough residual moisture in there to keep those roots vibrant and to keep them moist as opposed to mm -hmm. bark can get very, very dry in other medium. Another key element is your charcoal because that's gonna neutralize any chemical issues you've got going, fertilizer, if you've got water issues. Exactly. We're very lucky in this area, we've got absolutely what you'd call water. the perfect water, uh, pH neutral water for orchids. And then one of the things that I like to use a lot is uh, this is a large form of perlite called sponge rock. Again, what you're doing with that, you're increasing the drainage, you're increasing that airflow, increasing that space for the roots to Where grow. Where would a person find these elements? So those elements, most any orchid grower is going to carry a supply of these, and most of them will be happy if they're not repotting for you to, to sell you some. Or uh, uh, they, uh, they do uh, sell that mix online as well. Mm -hmm. And everybody's a little different. I do all my own soil yeah. amendments, so somebody else may, may tell you, well, I don't use as much as the tiny orchid uh, or uh, coconut bark as he does. I use mostly the bigger. Um, but again, everybody's greenhouse, everybody's growing uh, situation is a little different. And after 30, 40 years, you kind of figure out what works the best for yeah. you. It's kind of trial and error. So this is going to be probably a little bit of a tight fit. But what we're going to do, the uh, first thing we're going to do is place the orchid Oh, so down you're not going to take the old ones off. No, all those are good viable oh. roots. And I'm also not gonna worry about a few of those roots dangling over the side, uh, especially since uh, you do like to miss them. It's not gonna hurt to have a few of those uh, aerial roots dangling over I the side. I failed already, because I would've cut those brown suckers well, off. <laughs> the other thing you notice that I did was I stood the orchid upright uh, in the pot because right. after a while they're going to want to start falling. It had done that out dangling, of the pot. yes. And probably much to your chagrin, I'm also going to take these wilting leaves. <clears throat> I'm going to cut them off because all they're doing, they're not healthy, and all they're doing is sapping the plant of energy, okay? Doesn't it have a new center one coming? Yes, and it's got a it's got a, a fairly new leaf here. You can tell that's still soft. It's not leathery and hard. This is not really their growing season. It will actually probably put a spike out after repotting it instead of growing more. Uh, but again, you're going to recenter it in the pot. Um, you notice I've got a raise just above the level of the pot there to where it's not shoved down in the pot. I like that just because again, you're not burying the roots in uh, medium. You notice there's really no finesse to this. I'm not being particularly careful with the roots. I'm dumping that mix down in. You're not 
uh, you're not having to worry about that. The one thing I do like to have is some kind of prod so I can make sure you see some of those air spaces in there. The air spaces aren't really going to be a problem, uh, but I do want to make sure that the medium is down around the roots nicely. Well, and then that that packing it in keeps it from what be, makes it more stable I right I'm trying to even. and then i'll put a little bit of top off on the top again the plant is still right above the edge of the pot so it's not sunk down in there it's going to get good air circulation and that plant is good to go for a couple of years let's talk a little bit about sickness in our plants what do you think is going on in this plant and talk about what insects we could in, encounter with our orchids? Most common insects are going to be your scale and mealy bug. Uh, they're pretty visible. You'll notice them right off the bat. If you look on the underside of that leaf, those little tiny tan dots, those are scale. That's your typical scale. Uh, these may very well be dead, but this plant has been infested at one point or another with scale. Um, more commonly than pests, especially if you only have a few orchids, you're not as likely to deal with pests as you are other kind of pathogens. You notice the color of this, these leaves is not particularly good. You've got the black spots in them. Um, when we took this out of the decorative pot, the first thing I noticed is that this pot is very, very heavy, which tells me it's holding a ton of water. So you've definitely got, just like your trees in your yard, if you look and the leaves are, are turning black, the problem is most likely started in the roots and orchids are no different. So we've probably got a pretty serious root problem here. Um, I'm gonna pull this back away here just a bit so I don't get down on any other plants. And sure enough, you can see the roots are rotted off. Oh, it about pulled the vellum off, right, mm -hmm. yeah. So with this plant, you got a couple of choices. Um, sometimes it's hard not to be big hearted. It's hard for all of us to throw a plant away. Um, I would recommend considering that unless this has a lot of sentimental value, somebody gave it to you or, or it was a costly orchid. Um, I would consider that. Alternatively, um, you're going to want to cut all of those uh, roots that broke off when I pulled off the pot another inch or two back. It's still going to leave you with some viable roots because it did have some roots coming out of the pot, but um, uh, I would definitely uh, make sure you do the styrofoam at the bottom. That's a good example of why you want that air circulation. You will probably never see rot like that on the roof if you're using something like the styrofoam peanuts for air circulation, but this plant has just simply stayed too wet too long. What would you do with this plant right here as far as its health and and trim and whatever? Yeah, the health and vigor of this plant is excellent. It is planted in a completely different medium. This is, uh, I do use this for some of my slipper orchids. This is long fibered, probably Chilean or Argentinian uh, sphagnum moss. Not to be confused with peat moss, it's sphagnum moss. Uh, uh, grows in big sphagnum bogs and uh, one of the advantages is that it does dry out quite well between waterings and it is fairly well aerated. Uh, the only caveat to this uh, medium is if you are not regularly repotting this medium every year, uh, once this stuff starts to break down, it will absolutely just turn into soup and rot your roots. And again, you see at the bottom, I would, I would recommend a layer of something because in any watering, the moisture is always going to gravitate towards the bottom. But if it's sitting in those peanuts, it's not touching the roots. Absolutely. All right, now we're going to switch gears to another variety of orchid which I didn't even know existed. Tell us, Tim, about this, and you are growing it outside, correct? Yes, and, and I recommend if you do have orchids, uh, bring them outside in the summer. Make sure you, you know, give them proper amount of shade or sun or whatever they require, but they're always going to do better outside with the additional humidity and that that you're not gonna get in your house and the more natural lighting. This is a Stanhopia orchid, and uh, it's got a very different form of growth. So as we talked about repotting earlier, um, one size does not necessarily fit all. 
An orchid like this is going to need to grow in more of a basket-like setting with sphagnum moss or osmunda fiber or something the roots can grow through and the flowers can go through. And when I say the flowers, in this particular orchid, the flowers are actually going to merge from the bottom of the basket down three, four, five inches and then open up. Um, the really cool thing that I like about the Stanhopia is, is that there's only one particular creature that uh, pollinates this in nature. Well, is it a moth? It is a bat. It's a actually bat. a bat, yes. So um, uh, it's just a, another example of one of the, the beauty, beauty of nature. So how old is this plant? That plant is probably about 20 years old. Goodness, so this, this is attainable through mail order or orchid societies. It's not something that's rare and everybody would have to pay. Right, it would no, neither be rare nor expensive. This is probably the most common variety of stanopia, so it should be ready, readily available and uh, find them fairly easy to grow. They uh, do take quite a bit of neglect. You'll notice as opposed to the orchids that we looked at repotting, these have fairly large bulbs on them. So if I did forget to water for a week or two, it's got a good result reserve of energy and food and moisture in those bulbs. So when will it put out its bloomscapes? It will bloom next summer again. Yeah, it will bloom up. And uh, what color? They are a cream color and uh, with a beautiful red and black throat and they have a very strong almost winter green, oh, almost overwhelming. You could smell it a half a block away scent. Very at heavily night. scented at night. Well, in the evening at night, and that again no. is the gonna bat. attract the pollinators. Yes, exactly. Well, Tim, you just always amaze me, and I know that orchids just seem to be such a, people just don't understand, oh, I can't do this, but you've certainly shown us through the potting and what might be wrong with an orchid that we can put this into our homes. We don't have to have a greenhouse and enjoy growing them and, and don't be afraid of them. And thank you for allowing us to come. You're very welcome. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.